this is Mr. Martin, and uh, this is uh, the um, end of the notes for uh, Geometry Honor Section 1.1. Um, so we got through most of the packet in class, and um, just going to finish up in this video. So we were talking about angles, and uh, we didn't quite get to uh, the way to name angles. And um, so uh, we've got three examples here. In the first example, we see that there's uh, a single angle. <coughs> So there's a couple different ways we can name it. Since there is just a single angle, we could call it angle I, and that would be sufficient, and there wouldn't be any confusion. Or we could use um, three of the letters, making sure that the vertex is always the middle letter. So we could call it angle K, I, J. Or we could flip those letters around, and we could call it angle J, I, K. So I may have mentioned in class also, if there's a number inside this vertex, I'm just going to arbitrarily put a 3. Um, we could also use the number inside of that vertex. Um, and you could always do this on a quiz or a test, just throw a number inside that angle. Um, and it'll make it easier for you to name it. You could call this angle 3. So um, we've got four different ways to name this. <coughs> Again, normally you just need to name it in one way, but we're getting a little practice, so we'll name it in more than one way. All right, in uh, the second picture here, we actually have three different angles. We have um, this smaller angle um, to the left. We have this other small angle to the right. And then if we put those two together, we get a larger angle. So let's look at each one of those. Now, um, since our vertex of all three angles is A, we can't say angle A because it would lead to confusion you might be saying, well, why can't we call angle A the largest angle, but it won't always work. So, you know, our convention is if there's more than one angle at the vertex, then you have to use three letters or a number inside the vertex. So let's start uh, with this bottom angle over here. We could call that angle D. That would be a D. Let's try that again. Angle D, A, C, or... We could flip it around and call it angle C, A, D. Again, if we wanted to put a number inside that vertex, like 1, we could call it angle 1. Okay, then we've got this angle over here. We could call it angle C, A, B, or angle B, A, C, or, again, put a number inside there, we could just call it angle 2. And then our third angle, which is the large angle, this big angle over here, we could call it angle DAB, or flip those around, and BAD. So if you notice, all three of the angles, they have A as the middle letter because that's the vertex, and that's our convention for naming it. <coughs> but this third angle here, since it um, covers these two, we can't really put a number inside the vertex. Um, so there's just two different ways to name it. So an angle that's a combination of uh, two or more angles, um, you're going to have to use three angles to name it. All right, moving on to the next example. Um, we've got this uh, angle that looks like a straight line. Um, it's called a straight angle. Uh, and we, again, have three different angles here. So um, let's talk about angle one first. So we could call it angle one, or we could call it angle E, G, H, or we could call it angle H, E, G. Okay, then the angle on the right. Um, and if you want to uh, pause the video and see if you can figure these out on your own and then just play the video and check yourself, that would be great. So the angle on the right would be angle 2, or angle H, G, F, or angle F, G, H, and again, since G is a vertex of all of our angles, you could see G, well, I should probably fix that there, huh? If you find mistakes in my videos, make sure you let me know in class. Um, that would be um, H, G, E, sorry about that. So again, all the angles have G as their vertex, now that I fix that. And then the last angle is the straight angle here. Um, and we're going to name it in the same way. It just happens to be 180 degrees. We've got angle E, G, F, or angle F, G, 
G E. All right. Again, if you have any questions, make sure you write those down in the margins of your notes here and uh, ask me when you come into class. So the next concept that we're going to talk about is uh, union and intersection. <coughs> so union is uh, what you get when sets, in our case our sets are going to be geometric figures, are joined. So we're putting things together. So um, if you think of a union like a marriage, when two people get married, um, everything that each of them had separately, now they all put together. And then the symbol that we use, use is actually a big U shape here. Okay, this is the symbol that we use. Um, and then we have intersection, and this is what have what sets have in common. Um, when we're talking about geometric figures, you want to might think about um, where do they touch or where do they overlap. And then we take that symbol and we flip it over, and it becomes the symbol for intersection. So let's draw a picture here. And then we'll uh, do some sample problems. So I'm going to have a quadrilateral. And let's draw the diagonals. And let's label the points here. So I've got A, B, C, D. This will be E. And then I'm going to add one more point over here, point F. <coughs> All right, and for part A, I want to find the intersection of segment AF. So AF intersected with segment EC. So let's take a look. I'm going to grab a highlighter here. So I've got AF, which is right over here and I want to find the intersection with EC which is right over here so I want to see where do those two highlighted segments touch or overlap and we can see that they overlap right here in the middle from E to F which would be a segment so that segment E let's try that again segment E take three segment E F All right let's try another example B let's find the union of segment A F and E C so same two segments now we're just gonna put them together so again, if I take AF, the yellow highlighted segment, and EC, the green highlighted segment, and I put them together, I get a longer segment that goes all the way from A to C. So I get segment AC. <coughs> so this is a topic that um, students typically have trouble with at the beginning. So uh, make sure you write down those questions and ask them uh, next time you see me. All right, so for part C, uh, we're going to find the union of ray EB and ray EF. All right, so I'm going to grab another highlighter. So ray EB goes this way, and ray EF starts at E and goes in the direction of F forever. So I can see that when I put those two rays together, they have a common endpoint, the vertex. It's going to be angle B E C. We could call also call it B E F if we wanted to. So angle B E C. All right, let's take a look at uh, another example. We've got a few more. I'm going to find the intersection of line. A, B, intersection with segment F, C. So line A, B, picture's getting a little messy here, but line A, B goes this way, left and right forever. And segment F, C is over here, 
So you can see we want to find out where do they cross overlap touch what do they have in common well these two don't have anything in common so in this case the intersection is the empty set alright now let's take a look at a similar example we'll just change it a little bit let's say we have line a b again and we want to find the intersection with line f c so now I've got line AB over here, but line FC now is going to go on forever through F and C. So we can see over here that these two lines cross in this spot over here, which is a point. So the intersection of line AB and line FC is point A. All right, we've got two more. Example F. So we've got ray FA, and we want to find the intersection with ray EC. Feel free to pa pause the video if you want to try and figure it out. All right, so ray FA starts at F and goes in the direction of A forever. And ray EC starts at E and goes in the direction of C forever. So we can see, hopefully we can see, that uh, they kind of intersect right over here um, from E to F. So that's going to be segment EF. All right, and then I'm going to give you one more problem, and I'm going to have you figure that out, and you can come to class and tell me the answer. So I want ray FA, and I want the union with ray EC. See if you can figure out what that is, and then also see if you can figure out what these two blanks are. Um, a triangle is the blank of three blanks. Um, so again, write down any questions. Make sure you ask me in class.